It turned into an event several hundred spectators had gathered to witness. Kenneth Parkinson, who had served as an attorney with the re-election committee, arrived. He's been charged with conspiracy. Next, former Attorney General John Mitchell, charged with conspiracy, obstruction of justice, and four counts of perjury. Then Charles Colson, who was the president's political advisor and special counsel, indicted for conspiracy and obstruction of justice. Simultaneous with Colson's arrival, demonstrators, signs, and placards appeared. Never before in the history of this country have so many who have held so much power been brought before a judge to face criminal charges. The seven men served at the core of the first Nixon administration and as the inner counsel for the 1972 re-election campaign. A former Deputy Attorney General, Robert Mardian, ducked newsmen by entering through the court's garage. He's charged with conspiracy. H.R. Bob Haldeman and John Ehrlich arrived together. Haldeman is charged with conspiracy, obstruction of if my play and my sentence will serve as a symbol that will stop it and stop people's individual rights being hurt, then I hope it'll have served a worthy cause. Mr. Colson, a lot of you are going to ask me, I suppose, how I, what I view the sentence and how I think about it. I just want to... They're watching out for you. I just want to say uh, one thing, and I'm not going to say anything else. I have committed my life to Jesus Christ. I can work for the Lord in prison or out of prison. That's how I want to spend my life. And what happened today is the Lord's will and the court's will. And I, of course, accept that fully. I take such comfort out of Paul's words to the Corinthians when he said, when I am weak, then am I strong. God has done the greatest things in my life through my weakness, not through my strengths. When I go into prison and I see people who have been converted, I realize God has used not any of my achievements or triumphs, God has used my defeat, the fact that I was a convict. When I am weak, then am I strong. Jesus had appeared to Paul and said, in your weakness is my power perfected. I couldn't do it, but God could. We can't do it, but God can. If we could learn that dependence upon the sovereign, holy God who rules this universe, and if we would be obedient to Him, and that's what this movement is, of God's people stepping out in faith, being obedient to Him, recognizing our weakness, but in our weakness is God's power. That's why this movement is having the power it is for and I sense the power of the Spirit of God at work in you. That's the greatest encouragement that I could ever have. I have committed my life to Jesus Christ. I can work for the Lord in prison or out of prison. 